Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Vosk and you're watching the Vosk One YouTube channel. I know it's easy to feel like we are doomed right now. Also, the new Doom game came out. I haven't played it yet. It looks freaking sick, right? A vengeance. Hell yeah, everybody loves a little bit of carnage. But uh, yeah, so today we're gonna be talking about surviving, uh, you know, a bear market, bad mining conditions, okay? So just kind of what you can do in order to really just keep your profitability up, keep the lights on, or worst case scenario, minimize your losses if you wanna keep mining. Okay, so it's gonna come down to a couple of things. And uh, so one of the main things here, or the main thing here, I should say, is efficiency. It's about getting your miner a more efficient how to achieve a higher efficiency okay so we're gonna go into you know what firmwares will give you full adjustability if the firmware that it comes with does not offer that and how that can help you maybe not even decrease your hash rate or slightly and then hopefully exponentially decrease your power consumption which will in turn increase your efficiency and increase your overall profitability this is applicable to mining farms and especially residential at home miners. This video is gonna be all centered around Bitcoin mining. We're gonna be using a firmware that is only applicable to Bitmain Ant miners, the most popular ASIC miners, application specific integrated circuit miners, purpose-built machines. Basically, these are the things that mine Bitcoin. All they do is mine Bitcoin and they are the best at mining Bitcoin. Bitcoin has recently been topping and topping and topping all time network difficulties. Basically means it's harder than ever to mine a Bitcoin, which in turn lowers, you know, per miner profitability. Uh, for the first time in a long time, the difficulty is going to drop and it's actually going to push it back to end of 2019 difficulty level. So this is a big deal. This coupled with some efficiency settings could hopefully help you increase your mining profitability. So that's what today's video is all about. Today's video is also about 10 seconds of the beautiful Shiba Inu pup tails. Look at her. Just look at it. Would you just look at it? She's she's so adorable, right? So let's roll the intro, talk about the $5,500 FPGA mining card we're giving away and then jump into the video. The CVP13 FPGA cryptocurrency mining card by Bitware. It retails for $5,500. You use coupon code BOSSCOIN to save $500 on any of these. You order from any of their retailers or enter the giveaway for this card and put the link in the video description below. And if we hit 100,000 subscribers in the next month or so, or by the end of the giveaway, guess what? You get it for free. Cool, right? Well, only one lucky winner, but hey. Let's do a brief overview, and then we're gonna go into the actual like firmware and then how to monitor your electric and really just the whole meat of today's video. So Bitcoin, $6,650 is what it's trading at right now now we also look at the bitcoin hash rate versus price in usd you can see when the price recently plummeted down to four thousand dollars so did the network hash rate because these people said whoa this ain't profitable i'm losing money mining and they just didn't want to play that game so hey you know if you flip off a of bitcoin that quick did you really believe in it i mean should you even have been mining it at that point to begin with whole different subject and story there but anyway that kind of drop is pretty crazy i mean that hash rate puts us hey, let's go with the hash rate we're back at now so i mean this kind of this hash rate honestly it kind of turns us back almost a year right and the Bitcoin network difficulty, which this determines how difficult it is to mine a Bitcoin. And what that means is that the higher the difficulty, the harder it is to mine a Bitcoin. So basically each miner will mine less Bitcoins. Okay, so with that hash rate drop, it's setting up to be like a, like a negative 16% uh, drop in the uh, difficulty. And that's going to put us towards end of December or end of 2019 difficulty rates so you take this and you take your increased efficiency and hopefully we can increase the mining profitability for everyone watching the Voscoin YouTube channel if you're worried about changing firmware and how difficult that is first you can download the firmware that's on your device you know to the to your computer so you always have it handy we're gonna be using the Bixbit firmware we've talked about it before uh, right now they have firmware out for the Antminer S17 S17 Pro T17 S9 S9J S9i T9 plus and they are also uh, they apparently have the T7 T7 
S15e and S17e models right around the corner. They also want to develop firmware for the Canon miners and the What's Miner miners, as well as obviously all of the newer amp miners. So if we log into our mining device, you know, you just grab the IP address associated with it. And from there to change the uh, firmware, you're just going to go right here to the first page where we re log in. You're gonna click upgrade. And oh, this looks a little bit different now because the, the, the firmware's changed and they made it look a little bit nicer or whatever. But basically, you're just gonna be able to generate a archive, okay? And that's gonna be a backup. It's gonna be called the same thing on the stock firmware. And you can always go back uh, to your original firmware with that or download it from, say, Bitmain site. And if you want to change the firmware, all you have to do is click Flash Firmware, you'll click Browse, and then you will select the associated firmware that you want to load and click Flash Firmware. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using an Antminer T9 Plus. I know it's not the best or most profitable miner, but it's something I have handy, and it's something I can easily measure on 120 volt electric rate, which this is kind of like residential, worst case scenario, it'd be a little bit more efficient on 240 volt or 220 volt. And uh, yeah, it's just easy to deal with. Again, it, this firmware can do the same stuff with any of the miners I just talked about. After you flash the firmware, give it a couple minutes to get going, you can click on miner status, and then from here you can see your mining performance. So I've had this thing up with this exact firmware configuration for over a day, and you can see that it's you know it's clearly been stable. One of the biggest things is not only gonna to be to evaluate your miner side hash rate, but to go to the mining pool and look at your hash rate and what you're registering there. So my registered hash rate with the F2, F2 pool, uh, mining pool, mining Bitcoin is 9.69 terahashes a second over the last 24 hours. The miners are reporting about 9.7 terahash a second. Also keep in mind that this firmware does have a dev fee, okay, it's 3%. And that's okay if I'm making or at least saving, you know, more than 3% than if, if whatever it costs me basically is less than I'm earning, you know, by using the firmware, it's fine with me. Also, another thing I want to note here is that in today's age, you need to be utilizing ASIC boost to get the best performance out of the miner. So I'm just gonna briefly show you some of your options here with setting this up and the customization capable with uh, this firmware. And then I'm gonna go into, you know, what this miner should be earning, what it is earning and just kind of how much we saved or didn't save here by utilizing this stuff. So the, there's a lot of options in here, which is really fun. If you like to tinker with this kind of stuff, you get a lot of good information. Again, if you want to learn more about this stuff and tinker with it, if you don't, then just ignore it. If you do, well, sweet, we've got it there. What's very interesting here is that not only can you tune this stuff down, you can crank it up. And keep in mind, these are preset minor configurations. You can you know, customize this more if you want to and achieve different things. So with this, I'm supposed to be at about 955 watts and getting about 9.7 terahash a second. Out of the box, this miner mines, uh, it's supposed to mine 10 and a half terahash a second at 1,400 watts, okay? So just if we take that out of the box electric cost with ASIC boost on, we'll be mining 13 terahash a second. So basically, you get two and a half terahash a second for free just by using this firmware. And if that doesn't cover the 3% fee, then we just ain't making enough money. That's, that's what it comes down to. So it's really fun, you know, say it was a crazy bull run, you could be like, yep, cranking this thing up to the max because right now, dollar for dollar stuff is my go-to. But we're kind of in the opposite of that where it's not the best, you know, it's not the most profitable time, easiest time mining Bitcoin. This is last gen hardware and so forth. So if this stuff's not efficient, then it's pretty much just time to throw it out. I think the profile that I'm on for this video is probably the best efficiency setting. So it's getting 9.7 terahash a second, right? And if we wanted to say tune it down, we we'll go down to 800 watts, reduce it from 950, you're losing one and a half terahash a second there. Is that worth 150 watts? You know, that's up to you. So let's go up 150 watts, right? So that would put us, well, there's not really a good, clear representation there. So we could go up like 100, basically 200 watts, and we could get about 1.3 terahash increase. And the other thing I wanna note before I just go on and on about all these little numbers is you could keep the stock hash rate 
of actually there's a little bit higher 10 like 10.7 terahash a second up over 10.5 terahash a second shaving about 300 to 400 watts off of the consumption of this miner i mean that's that's very impressive so let's look at what this miner is supposed to make right so per the calculator it's supposed to make like 0. 0.0002 bitcoin and that's about a dollar 40 a day and it's on a 10 cent per hour kilowatt hour electric rate you can see right there this miner should it's probably going to cost you or is calculated to cost you three dollars and 44 cents a day to run so you will pull in a whopping negative two dollars that's it calculated at ten and a half uh terash second and 1432 watts like we've already talked about so let's see if we go to our revenue here on f2 pool this miner's been up for over 24 hours only miner on this account and it mined this much bitcoin okay so we put that in the calculator and at current rates that is um you know almost a dollar and ten cents and i know what you're thinking you're like Vosk, who freaking cares you have a miner that's losing money and now it's still losing money and i get that look i'm not saying that like this firmware will just make you un an, an unprofitable miner profitable that's, that's this is a demonstration video okay so this kind of stuff is going to be a lot more applicable when you take a miner like an s17 so let's go in here and look for the s17 you can see this miner depending on which model you have well let's take the s17 pro 53 terash so this thing makes two dollars a day uh, you know after electric cost or apparently 156 now that i've clicked on it whatever but you know it makes six dollars and 59 cents and it costs about five dollars a day to run these numbers applied you know if you can get a, an equivalent efficiency increase here this is gonna be a lot more applicable when you have a profitable miner this stuff isn't gonna make an unprofitable miner profitable necessarily but it may be helpful or useful to you another thing to keep in mind is that i think this has rounded up a little bit i think just you know 0 0.7 0 0.8 increase on the terahash a second wasn't going to net us that much more bitcoin to bump the profitability up there so we took a miner that was power hungry and not that profitable and we made it not as power hungry and uh, slightly less profitable. I know it's like not the craziest headline there, but this firmware has always been great for us. It's been easy to use and it's really been nice to have the customization options. You can see, you know, running it on this mining profile, it consumes about a thousand watts. And that's at the wall, 120 volt, you know, with the Bitmain power supply, which isn't an inefficient power supply, but there's definitely more efficient power supplies out there, say like a titanium EVGA ATX power supply, a much better, you know, premium, again, power supply. And if you're struggling with your day-to-day -day operations, if you want to increase your efficiency, if you want to have that customization, you know, I think looking at options like this firmware or other comparable firmwares, like this isn't the only firmware out there, okay, I get that. But it is a firmware that we've been using for over a year. It's really helped us kind of squeeze more life out of some miners that would have been otherwise unprofitable. Also keep in mind, when you reduce the power consumption, you're reducing the heat output. This is a big deal depending on your environment, right? Because your miner is not just, you know, you're dealing with just this miner, you have to deal with the heat. How are you gonna get rid of the heat or utilize the heat? Okay, so maybe it's the winter, maybe you wanna burn more electric, you wanna get some more heat, crank it up. Now it's the summer, now it's hot, now your AC bill may be going, okay? Well, turn it down, more efficient, and uh, also producing less heat, less to deal with, less to manage. Also, it may come down to your power output. Maybe you only have an X amount of amps, right? Well, if you get the efficiency up, then you can put more miners in there and potentially have more units and potentially have more profitability. There's a lot of different ways you can take this. So that's really it, guys. I just wanted to bring you a video, just kind of bring it back to the basics, how you can get that profitability up, that efficiency up, and get your power bills down in a time where you really don't want extra bills, higher bills, and so forth. So I hope that you guys can keep the miners on, keep supporting the network, keep acquiring the coins, and you know just doing whatever you want to do, and just uh, enjoying crypto for what it is. Hopefully, de decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, global, borderless, you know, money and everything else when we get into all the other cryptos and everything they do. If you want to learn more about all that stuff and this video is interesting, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Bosscoin YouTube channel. It makes all the difference for us. Hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see more of. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.